have have you, any of you ever thought of trying to stay in one place without speaking to a single person for 24 hours? Do you have any idea how that can be? Because what I've heard in the last 10 minutes is just a flurry of unnecessary activity that everyone is involved in. It serves no worldly purpose. I was looking at Prema sitting quietly in her house doing nothing, nothing around, no distractions, no TV on, nothing on. And I thought to myself that we just fill our day with so much chatter and so much nonsense. Why? Why? What earthly purpose does all of this serve? What are we all trying to achieve? There is a thirst, a desire, until that desire within us is not eliminated, there will be suffering. You were not born for so much activity. So, if you think about it thousands of years ago, when we lived in nomadic groups of hunters and gatherers, they hunted, a group hunted a fish. Then they ate that fish till it was finished. Then they hunted and they found some berries and nuts and they ate that till it was finished. They didn't do much else. They only went out and indulged in activity when they just needed to eat. And that was it. very much connected to the earth, very much connected to the world. In a day, how many times have you stopped to just admire this world we live in? To just be grateful for everything that you've been given. How much time do you have to do that? Rushing, 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 rushing. One activity to another, one activity to another. Must be part of this, must be part of this. The desire here is for experiences. More and more and more and more and more and more experience. There is a limit to that too. That's why, you know, when you take a day off to just breathe, it's, it's like the stupidest thing to do, right? You just take a day off and you breathe. It connects you very deeply to yourself. You have no idea how much it connects you to yourself and to the world that you live in. Make sense of everything else. All your life, you go through your whole life not even aware that you're breathing. It's the first act you do and it's the last, that out breath, that exhalation is the last thing you'll have to do on this earth. Are you even aware of it or familiar with it or do you know what it feels like to take, out, take that last breath and not breathe again? not feel any panic, not feel any fear. To be completely familiar with the power that you've been given, the power of the breath. It's all consciousness and nature and you have mired yourself in activity, activity, activity. Activity moves you from thought to thought to thought to thought and 
you know that Krishna is only visible in between the Gopikas when, when she's dancing, right? The Gopis are all dancing, but in between, suddenly you get that glimpse of Krishna. What is Ras? What is the Leela? They're dancing around Krishna, around hundreds and hundreds of Gopis. And suddenly you see him with his flute. You can only see yourself in that brief gap between your thoughts. But if you have no time to even sit and breathe, what are you doing? What are you doing? You'll reach the age of 65 or 85 and say, what did I do? I never even stopped to smell the roses. I never even enjoyed myself. I was too busy, too busy bringing up my children, too busy, you know, fighting with my wife and fighting with my husband and you know, trying to make money and driving on the road and doing all these worldly things that are all unnecessary. None of which will give you a moment's happiness. The more I got contemplative, the less I found people were inviting me to their home. I was losing friends like flies. For a while I thought it was... I was wondering what was going wrong. Because everyone's terrified, I'll, invite, I'll ask them to come and take a workshop and go for a meditation. I saw a beautiful video with, with Eckhart Tolle. He says, the first sign of getting on a spiritual path is that you lose your friends. Hmm. Be happy for it. See, there's no reason in this world for you to be unhappy. Even if you lose your friends. You've got to be happy. You've got to be at peace. It doesn't matter what someone says to you. Quickly you have to recognize who is getting hurt by what is said. My ego. My ego. Just now while coming. Rajiv and myself were exchanging words. I've already forgotten it. <laughs> already forgotten it. It could have, ten years ago, we would have been not talking to each other for five days. How dare you tell me, waiting for the other person to apologize. Time has gone. Time has gone by. You first, how dare you tell me this? How dare you talk to me like, don't talk down to me, don't take me for granted. Nonsense that we are involved in. And the things that are really important, that we don't have time for. How are you to deal with all the problems in this world? If you don't take time for yourself. And by time for yourself, I don't mean going and doing your nails. Although that is important too. I mean, I have to have green nail polish, right? If I'm wearing an outfit that has green. Why not? That is also important. But that time that you take for contemplation, for reflection, for changing the way you react to this world. For taking moments, these aha moments that I used to talk about. Just stopping everything for a few seconds and just going, ah, ah, ah. Because this world is so beautiful. It's so covered in buildings and smog and pollution and noise and cars and traffic and, and cell phones and television that you don't have the time to sit and admire anything. I'll do that when I retire. A lot of people tell me, Gita, no, after retirement. But, but that Gita was supposed to be taught to you in, when you were a child so you can live. You know, not, this is not for retirement. This is not for retirement, this is for living. This is for living, living with a smile on your face.
So I keep doing what I'm doing because I know that if I don't do it, nobody's going to do it for this group. But there are other groups. Today I was watching, um, I watched this show, this Turkish show called uh, Dirilis. It's, it's, a, it's really wonderful. It's about uh, this King Ertrul who's a nomad. And his son actually is the first, uh, is Uthman who started the Ottoman Empire. So it's during the Templar, Templars, the Crusades, the Muslim um, group. And there in, the, in, in, in that group, there is this character called Ibn Arabe, who is um, um, a Sufi, who is, a, you know, he leads the dervishes. He's a, he's, he's a realized soul. And, and when you look at him and the things that he says, he could be quoting from the Gita. And to have a person like that on your side, to guide you, who wants nothing for themselves, those people are not there anymore. I don't know where they are. I cannot find in my search a Siddha who is a is there for no reason, who wants nothing from you, everything, all spiritualism, has a money amount attached to it. Everybody that you meet, whether it's Joel Osteen or Sri Sri or, you know, they all have wonderful things that they say. But there's, there's a business side to it as well. But Sai Baba, Sai Baba, the original Sai Baba, mm -hmm. Ibn Arabe, the, 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 the people, the ones people talk about, you know, Baba and uh, um, Lahiri Mahashai, that just was Siddhas, you know, connected and, and just good for, for no reason. And now the times are so bad, we need more of this, not less, we need more. You can't find it. And I was thinking that we've divided ourselves so much, we focus so much on our religion and our ritual and our culture and our practices. This it takes up a lot of our time. And we lose the main goal because we don't have anyone to guide us. The main goal is to find yourself. The main goal is to be at peace. The main goal is to be in harmony with nature. The main goal is to just create love and belonging and compassion wherever you go. We've forgotten all that. And we don't have inspiring teachers like that. We listen to it a little bit, you know, attention span, two minutes, little bit, one little meme enough knowledge for the day. Yeah, yeah, very good, excellent. Thumbs up, very good. <laughs> huh? Full knowledge. That's what's happened to us. You know, you are your biggest teacher. You can teach yourself so much if you took the time for yourself to reflect. To see when these patterns come up that you want to get rid of. To, to spend a little time admiring nature. To be in gratitude. To really feel these values that we keep talking about. And not get lost in the rush. Don't get lost in all this nonsense that's happening outside. It's never going to get you anywhere. It's never going to. It's just a means to an end. Even if you work though your job is important the most important thing in your life must be your peace and your tranquility and your happiness because if you don't have that what do you have what do you have this Ibn Arabi walking around with a little bag Thayla. but the face is full of tejas full of feet the shining, shining godliness, you know, completely godified. That 
that's the image I always have of Sai Baba, you know, just a feeling of just that that light emanating from it. And I don't think that in my lifetime I have come across anybody whose sheer presence has made me feel this way. It's only an idea in my head. And I probably will never uh, truly experience this because again, it's all mental cons constructs, right? But how you're supposed to feel, how it's supposed to be. Who am I to say that? Who am I to know that? He could be in front of me right now and I don't know. Because I have these mental ideas of what I want. Even this need for enlightenment, this need for self-improvement is a desire after all. Isn't it? This longing that I feel to meet the right guru, to meet the right master who will show me the way is also a longing. Just like you have chocolate or you have, uh, you know, Rasam Shadam. It's also a longing. We get lost. We get so lost in this world. And the only thing that brings you back time and time again when you realize you are nothing is the very act of meditation. The breathing and the meditation, the knowledge. It's like the trishulam of life. I always say Om Namah Shivaya and there's always a Trishulam. Breathing, meditation, knowledge and in the present moment faith, courage and gratitude. Stay with that Trishulam and you can always get back to it. Get back to that center. Every three months I do these courses because I understand life goes on. You are, I can't stop everything. But at least once in three months or once in six months, take that day you know, for yourself. It's an offering I'm making for you because by the time I'm done, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. But I do it because I know that you will be refreshed. You will go to work mon on Monday with a lot of your karma released from your body and that is my offering to this world think about it think about how you are filling your days whether it's worth it take time take time to just be just be doing nothing. Just understand your place in this world and your connection to the divine. Because that's really all that matters. It's not in a temple, it's not in a mosque. It's right here with your eyes closed, you can access it.